Okay, let me show you the contents of this uh, video which I am going to cover. First, I will introduce the topic. Then I will explain the proposed scheme for object classification. Then I will talk about the image database preparation. After that, I will explain the ECOC based multi-class SVM classifier. Then we will talk about the appropriate cell size selection for the hop features and then I will implement this uh, classification problem in MATLAB. So I will explain its MATLAB code and in the last I will explain uh, the MATLAB code for discrete testing. So let's go ahead. But before going ahead, I recommend you to watch uh, following my video before going to this current video tutorial because in this video, I have explained the theory of the Hawk features. So here you will see that how you can compute the Hawk features of the input images, colored and the grayscale images. So this will give you the complete exposure to the Hawk feature calculation. Uh, the link is given in the description. So now let me uh, st uh, start this video tutorial. So the histogram of oriented gradients hog is a feature descriptor that is used in the computer vision and image processing for the purpose of object detection. So actually this technique uh, counts the occurrence of the gradient orientation in the localized portions of an image. So in 2005, the uses of the hog became widespread when the Navni Dalal first introduced the hog features in his PhD thesis under the Bell tricks for Parisian detections in images. So in this video tutorial, uh, I'm going to uh, implement the multi-class object classifications with help of the Hawk features. So for this purpose, uh, we will classify the four different geometrical shapes such as circle, square, star and triangle. Okay, and for classification, uh, I will use the ECOC based multi-class SVM classifier that I will explain later. So let's see the overall scheme uh, proposed. So this is the overall scheme. Here we have all the images, training images in our training database folder. All images are first converted into their corresponding Hawk features. And these Hawk features are stored in the feature database. And this feature database is used to train this ECOC based multi-class SVM classifier. So once the training is finished, we get a trained classifier. So this trained classifier is ready to classify the input images. So to test its performance, we have to give the test images. So all the test images which are stored in the test image database, they are first converted to into their corresponding Hawk features and then given to the strain classifier. So the strain classifier will classify all these input images and we get the test outcome. So on the basis of these outcomes, we can go for accuracy and we can plot for confusion matrix, etc. So this is the overall scheme, which is of course the simple one. So later we will see that how it will be implemented in MATLAB. And now let's talk about the image data set. So the image data set is available on the Kaggle.com. So you can access this easily. Uh, so the name of this data set is the four shapes. So this is the download button. If you go to the website, you will see this interface and uh, you can download it it is a small size 22 mb so if you download it uh, you will see that you have a, a total 16000 grayscale images of size 200 by 200 in the four categories i mean the circle square star and triangle so here are some example images from this data set okay as i said this uh, data set uh, uh, consists uh, 16000 images uh, but here I'm taking only the 4,800 images for uh, training and testing for speedy uh, demonstration. Uh, the total 4,000 images I'm taking for training, I mean 1,000 images per class. And then total 800 images I'm using for testing, 200 images per class. As I said, these images are of 200 by 200 size uh, and grayscale. And uh, I'm not doing any pre-processing of these images before classification. Okay. And this is the folder structure which you have to create in your local directory. So first you have to create uh, one folder by this name MHDB. You can give any name of your choice here. And uh, inside this uh, directory create two more folders train IMG and test IMG. Again you can give any name of these two folders. Uh, inside these two folders you have to create these four folders by the name circle, square, star and triangle. 
but here uh, do not change the name of the folder because these names of the folder will be taken as the labels for the images okay so for training uh, uh, as i said the thousand images per class will be used so total uh, 4000 images are for training and similarly a uh, total 800 images are for testing so let me show you these uh, uh, folders or directory structure in my computer so let me open the explorer okay so this is my current directory and he here you can see that this image db folder so when i click it you get these two uh, folders uh, test img and train img and inside train img again you can see these four folders um, by the name circle square star and triangle and if you click this uh, square you will see all these uh, thousand images for the uh, testing okay so uh, in this manner you have to create these folder structures in your computer also so let me go go back to the presentation and now let's see what is this uh, ECOC based multi-class SVM classifier. Actually ECOC means the error correcting output codes. So in machine learning actually there are many algorithms such as the logistic regression, support vector machines etc. Which are actually the binary classifier. Binary means uh, binary classification means uh, actually there are only the two target classes such as yes, no, one, zero, black, white, dog, cat, etc. So that means you can classify all your input objects into the two uh, classes. Uh, but in practice, uh, there are many classification problems which, uh, b which belong to the multi-class classifications. For example, uh, classifying four different shapes. For example, you have uh, the set of four different uh, images and you want to classify. So obviously you have to classify these images into the four classes C0, C1, C2 and C3 like this. So obviously this is a multi-class problem. And uh, as I said that SVM that is a support vector machine it can deal only the binary classification problem therefore it is not suitable for our current objective where we have to classify the four different shapes okay. So although we have the modified SVMs uh, for multi-class problems such as the one versus rest or one versus one uh, these uh, can also uh, classify the multi-class problem by dividing uh, the problem into the fixed number of binary classification problems. But uh, here I am using ECOC. Unlike 1 versus rest and 1 versus 1, this allows each class to be encoded as an arbitrary number of the binary classification problems. And when an overdetermined representation is used, it allows the extra models to act as the error correction predictions that can result in the better predictive performance. So if you want to know more details about the ECOC, uh, you can go to its literatures and the research papers that, uh, that are available on internet. So here I'm not going to in the deep detail of this uh, ECOC. Okay. So let's see how this ECOC classifier can be implemented in the MATLAB. So MATLAB has this inbuilt uh, function that is a fit C ECOC XY name value pair. So here the X is actually the uh, predictors, I mean the set of feature vectors for all the images. For example, in this case, uh, this X uh, is uh, actually the hog features of all images. Y is the corresponding class labels, I mean the output labels. And the name value, actually this is the name value pair argument. It has many options. For more details, you can go to the MATLAB documentation. But here I am uh, covering only the two important ones. The first one is the coding. So if you want to define the coding, uh, the default is the one versus one. But you can go to the all pairs, binary, complete, dense, random, one versus all, etc. Okay, so you have the freedom and flexibility to use uh, these coding scheme. And uh, you can define the learners also. For example, the default is the SVM, okay. Uh, but you can uh, uh, use the KNN, linear, naive base, trees, discriminant, etc. So it gives the flexibility uh, to you to try any uh, pair. Okay. Uh, now uh, let's come to uh, the selection, appropriate selection of the cell size for the hog feature. Actually, uh, this is my input image. I have taken one uh, input image of the star, which is of 200 by 200 size. And uh, of course, it's a grayscale, as I have already explained. Uh, if you find the hog features using the cell size 8 by 8, you get this type of hog features, okay? But the feature size is very huge. That is a 20,736 
for this uh, small image of 200 by 200 how what is this cell size etc that all information you will uh, know in my previous video which I have shown you in the starting of this video tutorial so I recommend you to go through that video first so you can know what is this cell size okay so if you take the cell size although the representation looks quite good but the feature size is very very large so obviously it's a memory hungry uh, it is not suitable for the small memory okay uh, if you are dealing with the uh, uh, thousands of images now if I take uh, the cell size 16 by 16 then feature size is reduced to 4356 and uh, here the hawk features also look good and uh, if I take the cell size 32 by 32 it is further reduced to the 900 uh, for this case I think uh, this 16 by 16 is better and I have also used a 16 by 16 cell size for the current implementation. You can also try the 8 by 8 and 32 by 32 in the MATLAB code that I am going to explain. Okay, you, ha you just have to change one code. You can also try, but I have implemented with a 16 by 16. Okay, so now let's come to the corresponding MATLAB implementation. So this is the MATLAB program for object or I mean the shape classification using the hawk features. So first uh, we have to prepare the database. So first you have to define the path for training, uh, training IMG folder and the test IMG folder. So this train IMG uh, and test IMG folders I have already shown you in my directories. So this uh, cons uh, includes all the training images, all the training images and the later one includes all the test images okay so you have to give the path of the folders now with the matlab image data store uh, we are reading all these training and test images uh, uh, so in this image data store uh, we have to include all the subfolders and the folder names will be used as the label source. So all the training images will go into the train DB variable and all the test images will go into the test DB variable. So now let's start the training. First, we, uh, we will read one single image from the database, training database. Let's say I'm reading this first image and I'm defining the cell size here. As I said, you can also change this to 8 by 8 and 32 by 32 if you want to do some experiments with it. So here I'm taking 16 by 16 cell size for hog features and now I am finding the hog features for this first image, okay, IMG. So the all uh, hog features uh, go to this uh, hog FV variable, okay. You can check the size of this hog FV in the, in the MATLAB workspace. And uh, here uh, we are finding the length of this hog features and we are reading uh, the number of total number of images which are in the train db folder or train db variable so with this uh, information these two informations i mean the number of images and the size of the hog features we are defining uh, one uh, feature database i mean this is a matrix uh, which has uh, the number of rows equal to the number of uh, images in the training folder number of images okay and uh, this is the length of this is the length of hog features hog features so by this way you define this variable uh, uh, train uh, training features i mean this is your uh, database that will uh, store all the hog features of images after that uh, we are reading these images one by one from the folder and uh, we are finding their corresponding hog features and then storing in this matrix okay so that's why we are completing uh, the hog feature database so this hog feature database will be used to train the classifier and with this command we are uh, reading the labels okay as we have the four different shapes so it will include the four uh, labels like uh, square circle triangle and star and uh, this is how we are implementing this uh, uh, ECOC based multi-class SVM. So this uh, function I have already explained. So uh, in place of X and Y, uh, 
uh, you can see that uh, X is the input that means all hawk features of training images and Y uh, is actually including uh, all the corresponding labels of images. And uh, I am not defining any other parameters that means all other parameters are uh, at their default values. So default values as I said uh, for classifier it is uh, SVM. Uh, I mean the for trainer and uh, coding scheme is uh, one versus one. So once this is done, uh, your classifier parameters will go into this classifier variable. It will take time, okay, depending on the speed of your machine and the number of images in the training folder, it will take some time in training. So once training is completed, you will get this uh, classifier model in your workspace. Now let uh, do the testing. So again, uh, we are uh, reading the number of uh, total images in the test folder. So total test images and then uh, test features. I mean, uh, we are again uh, defining uh, a database which includes all the hawk features of all test images, right? So these are all test images, number of test images. And this is the uh, size of hawk features size of hawk feature. So uh, this uh, matrix is also uh, defined here or initialized and then we are reading these test images one by one. Similarly what we have done for training, uh, finding hawk features for each images and then storing in this matrix and then uh, reading their labels. So now we have uh, all the test images in this matrix and we have already the trained classifier. So we will uh, test this classifier with this predict function. So here we have taken that trained classifier and then all hog features of all the test images are stored in this test feature variable. So the predicted variables, or I mean the predicted labels will be stored in this uh, variable, predict labels. So now you have to find the accuracy. So accuracy is simple simply the comparison of uh, these predicted labels and the predefined labels, I mean the test labels. So on the basis of that you can find the accuracy and you can also uh, plot the confusion matrix. So that will uh, be very helpful to uh, interpret the results, okay. And uh, now let go for uh, discrete testing. Uh, discrete testing means actually in the previous program we have given all the MA test images at once and you will get the answer in terms of the accuracy percentage accuracy and the confusion matrix. So there is no visual output. Uh, in this case I have uh, implemented this program so that you can give one in one image uh, at a time and you can see the corresponding uh, retrieved output. So there is a visual uh, output for understanding. So here we are reading uh, one image uh, from any directory as an input image and uh, defining the cell size and then extracting the hog feature of it and then uh, these hog features are given to this uh, classifier for predictions okay so this is a predicted label and this predicted label is uh, printed on the image as a title so uh, there will be indication as the title of the image that uh, this image belongs to what category okay so these programs are simple let me uh, run these programs in the MATLAB. So let me go to the editor. So this is the MATLAB editor and this uh, first program is already written here. Uh, I will simply uh, run this program by pressing this run button. So let me press this. Uh, since uh, it includes the training, so it will take time. Okay, so training has uh, initiated and here you can see that MATLAB is busy and it will take some time. So we have to wait till the training finishes. Okay, training is done. You can see uh, the confusion matrix is plotted and uh, see the accuracy. Accuracy I achieved here is 100%. 100% uh, is okay. It, uh, of course, not okay. It's uh, quite good uh, because uh, uh, the shapes which we have used in the database is quite simple. Okay, uh, these uh, images are not actually very challenging for classifications. You can go for more complex databases. Uh, there definitely it will not be 100, it will be below 100. So since these images are very simple, that's why I'm getting the 100 accuracy. 
And now let me show you the confusion matrix. So this is the confusion matrix. You can see that uh, these are the output class on my y axis and this is the target class. So the circle, square, star, you can see these categories and you can see their classifications uh, as 100, 100, 100, all are 100 persons and this is the final 100 percent output. Okay. So this is how you can train your uh, ECOC based multi-class classifier. So here I'm getting the 100 percent accuracy and if you can go for more challenging uh, databases, uh, you can get definitely below 100. And uh, now let me show you the discrete testing. I mean the testing with the uh, one image at a time. So the program is already written and uh, let me show you uh, its output. So it asked me to choose uh, the input image and let me choose one image from the test folder. So I will choose let's say one square uh, image number nine for example and this is the corresponding output. So you can see that uh, shape recognized is a square. Okay, don't confuse this with the diamond actually is the square which is rotated and distorted. So shape is recognized as square that you can see in the title and let me run again. Uh, uh, let me take one more image. Uh, let uh, this 187 it is distorted circle and you can see that shape recognizes circle very good now let me try one more uh, from test folder star select anyone and this is a uh, shape recognizes star very good and let me one more from the triangle category uh, you can select anyone and the shape recognized is triangle okay so this works on the simple images now let me check the robustness of this uh, scheme i mean robustness means uh, can it work on some uh, more distorted input images so i have uh, already created those images in my current directory you can see uh, these images you can see that i have distorted I mean I have cut this circle, I have drawn these lines on the circle, I have cut one corner of the square like that. I have distorted these star and triangles. So let me give these inputs uh, to the program and uh, see what output I will achieve. So first I am taking uh, this uh, circle which is cut. Uh, okay, so output is the shape recognized is the circle. So it is working fine. Let me give another distorted circle with the lines and the shape recognized is the circle again it's working good another image uh, this is a square with, where one corner is cut and the shape recognized is a square very good and another one where random pattern is drawn on the square the shape recognized is a square impressive and this is the star where one peak is uh, cut and the shape recognizes the star very good and this is a heavily distorted star and again it is recognized well shape recognizes a star and let me try for the triangle this is a triangle where all three corners are cut and the shape recognizes a triangle it's also good and the last one this one and the shape recognized is a triangle so here you can see that this scheme is uh, accurate as well as it is uh, robust also. I mean it can uh, classify, it can recognize uh, the heavily distorted input patterns also. So this is what uh, I have explained in this uh, video tutorial. I hope you have liked it and uh, you have learned it and you will definitely implement uh, this uh, scheme for your project work or just for learning. So I really thank you all for watching my video and uh, please uh, like it and share it and uh, stay tuned with me for more such interesting videos to come. Till then, goodbye.